Regardless of religion, sex, race, or background, the one certain reality that all humans on Earth share is death. Throughout history, all religions have developed the mindset that the dying must be cared for. Rituals should be performed for the dying, along with grieving for individuals. With these common themes in mind, different religions and cultures have developed different mindsets over the years. More specifically, Eastern and Western cultures are distinctively different with their acceptance of death and the afterlife. When it comes to religion, the Eastern portion of the world is mostly composed of Buddhists and Hindu. The Buddhists believe that death is a natural process, with which one's familiarity is important. The culture pushes for recognition and reflection upon the death process and the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. They therefore believe that death can be a time of joy and liberation from life in the material world. The Hindu have similar beliefs, but they also place an emphasis on the distinction between the human body and the soul, where the body dies, but the soul, which is the true self of a person, never does. Both religion, religions focus on karma and how the way that humans live their life determines where their soul will go in the future. And the death process is surrounded by many rituals and hope of easing the soul's way into reincarnation. The dominant religion in the Western portion of the world is Christianity. The Christian tradition focuses on the four last things, which are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. They believe that God gifts all humans with eternal life, but heaven, hell, and the eternal life are beyond any human comprehension. Jesus will be present at one days of judgment, which is when all humans will receive justice and their afterlife destination will be determined. Society as a whole fears death and for the most part chooses to not consider the process and its effects. Interestingly, the relationship between religion and culture differs between the Eastern and Western worlds. The Eastern world shows to be composed of between 80 to 100 percent Buddhists and Hindus, which correlate with the percentage of people who believe in some sort of God. In relation, 96% of citizens in Cambodia, Thailand, and Burma have expressed their beliefs in an afterlife. An article by NBC News showed that in the late 1980s, 13% of adults in the United States expressed serious doubts about the existence of God. By 2014, 30% had serious doubts, almost twice as many as in the 1980s. On the contrary, 73% of Americans said they believed in an afterlife in the 1980s, whereas 80% say they believed it in 2014. These statistics show a strong correlation between religion and culture in the Eastern world, where most people are both religious and believe in an afterlife. But a weak correlation is shown between the two in the Western world, where a majority may not be religious, but still believe in an afterlife. We decided to interview students with different backgrounds and perspectives to explore their ideas of death and see if their views correlate with those of the Western statistics. I don't really classify myself as religious. No, I would not classify myself as religious at all. I do not classify myself as religious. Um, I do consider myself religious. I go to church every Sunday, but I don't think I necessarily identify with like the strict like Catholic religion, but I do believe in some of the same things that they do because I was brought up in that religion. So. Yes, I am Muslim. Um, I'm somewhat religious. I'm, I think I'm very more on the uh, spiritual side of things. I do believe there's a God. I do practice Christianity. Um, I kind of like go with the things I, I agree with and then kind of ignore the things I don't really agree with so much in the religion. Yes, I'm Catholic. I think everyone has thought about their death at one point in their life. So, I mean, of course I have before and it kind of scares me, but I know it's inevitable. I don't think I'm quite ready to you know, accept it yet, but, or if I ever will be, but I know it's coming, you know. 
I have never actually thought about my own death. I don't believe it even registered in my system that I was mortal until I turned 30. And then I had a cold, something really not dramatic, just a cold. But for some reason, that cold triggered my mortality inside of me. And, and I wrote a whole novella about this. It wasn't about me, it was about a man going to France to find his mother who abandoned him, but it was about me realizing I was going to die. So I realize I'm going to die, but I've never actually thought about how. I do think about my own death, and I don't feel positively or negatively towards it. I just understand that it's part of life, and I just want to make as much of an impact as I can while I'm here. But I know that we're all going to die someday, and I think it's fine. Um. I definitely have thought about my own death, especially like working in an emergency room, like you see people die on sometimes a daily basis whenever I'm working. So I kind of do think about like my death and it like leaves me like really shook, like I can't really fathom it sometimes, but definitely being in this class, it like helped me like learn more to accept it and that is just like a part of life, so. I sometimes think about death, it's not a common topic that we talk about, but it does come up and I don't really feel awkward talking about it. Uh, I think about my death like a lot actually, especially here at school during finals and exams. But like on a serious note, uh, yeah, I've thought about it uh, quite a few times, especially at like close friends' funerals and, and things like that. I think about one day, you know, who's gonna, you know, be looking down on me or spreading my ashes or whatever the case may be. No, I don't really think about uh, my death too much, but you know, sometimes it comes up and I don't think it makes me sad, but because it's something we all have to live with. I mean, ideally I'd like to believe in some sort of afterlife, but from a scientific standpoint, um, I know I read somewhere that when you die, your brain just kind of shuts down. And it takes like about five minutes for your brain to actually shut down. So in that time, it's kind of like almost like a dream, you know. Your brain feeds you imagery to help you, you know, cope with your death. And you'll have no concept of time because you don't really have any concept of time in your dreams. So, you know, what if heaven really is just the last five minutes of your life and your brain's shutting down and you're trying to cope with that? You know, just... But I mean, I hope there's an afterlife. I'll never know, though. No one ever will. Well, I certainly would be lying or making an assumption if I said I knew anything. I don't know. Um, and I don't say obviously because I think there are some people who, who may know. Um, maybe they've crossed over and come back or um, had really direct experiences with people who've passed away and, and they're still um, you know, present in a sense. But all of that aside, I personally do not know. I strongly believe, however, that uh, a part of me, certainly not my personality, but a little drop of my, my essence, my essential being, my soul or my consciousness, continues on and, uh, and much in line with what we're reading this semester in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, I do believe in reincarnation. Um, I do believe we're here for reasons to learn different lessons here on Earth. So I think I, I kind of report back, um, if you will, to whatever it is we report back to. Uh, a great big light or, you know, a council of souls or just energy, I don't know. But I think I report back to that and, and see how I did and decide how I'm going to come back down. I do think I'm going to come back down. Um, kind of begrudgingly, like I'd like for it to be done, but I'm pretty sure I'm coming back. Uh, so, that's about all. <laughs> oh, as Louis C.K. said, a lot of things happen after you die, just none of them include you. Um, I think because of how I was brought up, I definitely do believe in like a heaven and a hell, but I don't necessarily think that it's like as we like depicted in the world, like, oh, like clouds and then hell is like literal fire, but, um, yeah, I do think that we do go somewhere after we die. I don't think that we're just like floating around the world. As a Muslim, I believe that there's an afterlife, so we do get reincarnated uh, in the heavens, and over there we are judged. 
uh, whether we go to heaven or hell. So I do believe there's an afterlife. There's a part of me that's like nothing happens and I feel like that's the fairer option of things because I don't believe in the whole good and bad thing because I feel like those things are subjective but at the same time because of my beliefs I do believe that we are rewarded in a sense for the life we've lived to some degree. I don't believe in a hell because I don't believe somebody should be punished for their conditions and lifestyles down here. So I feel like such things were made to control people those parts of religion, like you're going to be punished if you don't do this, you know, and you're going to spend etern eternity. I feel like that's a pretty high, um, you know, punishment. You know, I don't feel like it fits the crime necessarily, but I, I do hope that there's a great afterlife where, you know, I'm surrounded once again by those people who I love and care about. Uh, as a Catholic, we believe that, uh, you know, once you die, your soul gets instantly judged and your soul can go to uh, three different places. You can go to heaven, to hell, or a third place called purgatory. Um, and we believe that purgatory is a place, um, comes from the word to purge or to clean. Um, so we believe that purgatory is a place for people who um, are going to go to heaven but aren't ready, that they still have, um, they died with some sin in their hearts. And since heaven is a perfect place without sin, you must go to uh, purgatory to get cleansed first before you can go to heaven. I think it really does. So say, for example, if really it is your brain shutting down and that's your whole concept of heaven. If you've lived your life in a way that isn't so great, you might think that you don't deserve a heaven that great and that might be the afterlife you create for yourself. So ultimately, I really do think it matters what you do with your life. And also just content of life, you wouldn't want to live a life that's not too great anyways. I do think that the way I live my life affects what happens after I die, not in any sort of a judged fashion. And I was raised Catholic, so I was definitely raised with a concept of literally a man in the sky judging. Uh, me and I think at one point my mom even said something to me when I did a particularly kind act oh God's putting a little check mark next to a box um, and so there was this concept of somebody deciding whether the things that I were doing were right or wrong and whether you know I get into heaven or not um, I don't believe that's how it works at all I, I do think that there is a natural cause and effect to things, um, uh, you know, you could call it karma. I look at it more as a natural law of, of the energy we create having a direct, noticeable uh, effect. There's an impression created based upon everything we do, and so I don't attach a human-based sense of morality to things, but I do think there are inherently um, you know, I guess you'd call them good and bad things that that we do that have certain effects. So, uh, you know, all of that adds up inside of us, and uh, and when we die, well, like I said before, I don't know exactly what happens when we die, but I believe when we die, um, the accumulation of all of those causes and effects is is uh, apparent, and into the way we move into our next life or into our next non-life is, um, you know, in part dependent upon all of those actions. think that how we live our life affects how where we go when we die. I think that if you're a bad person that you don't necessarily go to heaven because I don't think you're forgiven for what you've done on the earth, but I don't think that you have to be a saint in order to go to heaven, so I think you just have to be like a decent person to go to a good place after you die. Yes, I do believe that the actions that we make in this life affect us in the hereafter as we are judged by our quote unquote good deeds and bad deeds of this life. Yes, I do. I do. I'm not going to lie. I think about it a lot. Uh, honestly, though, I, I, I feel like it's just it's neat. It's, it's just good to be a good person. You know, it's good to be good to people. Because honestly, I'm all about just living my best life here. And if I'm being in, you know, a, a, a jerk to everybody on earth now, you know what I mean? You're not going to live that great of a life. You're not going to have friends. You're not going to have people who want to be around you. You're going to not be invited to certain outings and things. So I believe like 
I believe in creating my own heaven here on earth. I'm not so much for, you know, thinking too far ahead into the afterlife, you know, but I do hope that, you know, my work here does pay off eventually. Uh, yes, I do believe that what we do here on earth um, kind of dictates where we go in our afterlife. So I was actually raised super Catholic, and I think that kind of made me more aversive to religion, if anything else. I was raised believing in like a judgment day, heaven and hell type thing, and I guess over time my feelings towards the Catholic Church kind of impacted how I feel about the afterlife. And then I took biology up as a major and started learning about, you know, the science behind life. And I think that's more so influenced now how I think about the afterlife, but not even that. There's lots of authors like Camus who think about the afterlife not so much as like a heaven, it's all great, but you know, more as an inevitability that you just have to come to terms with. I think I developed all of my thoughts through a lot of trial and error and exploration. I was definitely in tune with something bigger than myself um, from a very young age. I've always felt very intuitive and very connected to uh, what you might call God or the divine or something bigger than just this material existence. So that I think just came with me. But as far as the packaging of what that looks like, what are the rules, how does it all play out, um, like I mentioned before, I was raised Catholic, but that didn't stick with me, and I explored a couple handfuls of other religions and had like a postmodern approach for a while where I took a little bit from a lot of areas and stitched them all together to come up with my own ideas, but I think I've, I've disintegrated even that at this point, and um, I'm in a much more open space. So it's a continual exploration. And I do think of it as more of a science, a science of spirit or a science of spirituality than a faith-based system. Uh, a faith-based system has never worked for me. I need to, I need to live it and experience it and know it to be true. No, I was not raised with these beliefs because I was raised Hindu and I was told to believe that how we act in this life affects what kind of a life we're given in our next life. But over time, I just became more doubtful and it's not that I completely don't believe in it, but I just, I, part of me wants to believe in it, but more realistically I think, like I just go with assuming that nothing is going to happen. So I just, it just developed from skepticism over time. Um, I think that I was raised with belief, like if you do really bad things in your life, you're going to go to hell, but I don't think that my parents necessarily brought me up to believe that if you're just a decent person, you'll go to heaven. I think they wanted me to be like as good of a person as possible, like sick to all the things that the Catholic Church like preaches and stuff like that in order to go to heaven. So I definitely think that my beliefs about the afterlife have been accumulation of what my parents brought me up as and what I've like just learned through life. Yes, I was raised with the knowledge of that we will have an afterlife. Um, so my mom's a, I like to call her a super Christian. Uh, so she raised us in church. We were going to church like every time the church doors were open, we were always in church. So I have a very embedded belief, you know, in the Christianity and stuff and Jesus, you know, resurrection. And so, I mean, there's pieces and bits of that I believe of. I take the message of it, you know, not, not literally. Um, I've definitely kind of, you know, moved away from those beliefs a little bit, but I, I always find myself kind of going back to them in times of like pain or suffering or whatever. Uh, yes, I was raised with them, uh, but I think it was mostly because I was forced to at first and it wasn't until I was a teenager that I, you know, chose to, chose my beliefs to myself, which, you know, just happened to be with my parents, forced me. <laughs> definitely wouldn't want to know because knowing me I would probably try to avoid it and I'd have like some hope that it would be avoidable if I actually knew how I was gonna die. I don't want to live my life like that. I would be living more so to avoid dying than living to live, you know? 
I would not want to know. One hundred percent no. I think it would affect my the way I move through life organically. I just having that. I don't even like having plans. I don't even like <laughs> knowing I have to be somewhere this weekend to see a friend. Um, it somehow affects my natural settling into the moment and just moving with the flow of, of how things need to be developing for me to do my projects and get things done. So to have a really big plan, a death plan, I think would just throw the whole game off for me. So I definitely wouldn't want to know. No, I wouldn't, because it's the journey that matters, not the end. And if, all, if I knew the end, that's all I'd focus on, and I'd stop focusing on the journey. I would not want to know it, just because I think that the whole point of life is to like make it to that point where you don't know and it's just going to happen. So I think that if you know when you're going to die and like how you're going to die, you're just going to like either live your life avoiding everything that could lead up to that moment, or you're just going to like live too much and it just like won't be the same life that you would have had if you just like die spontaneously. So. Uh, no, I would not want to know because if I knew the time, place, how of my death, I'll be very stressed throughout my whole life and very, be very cautious, which I don't think is the purpose of this religion in the afterlife. Well, I would like to know um, because I don't, I don't like not knowing. I feel like I, I do things a lot differently. I, I, cherish certain experiences more and I feel like I don't cherish like certain things like I need to now but being able to say bye to certain family members and loved ones and friends before I left that would be that'd be a nice thing you know um, sometimes I think about how I don't want to die um, I'm terrified of drowning <laughs> but for the most part I think I wouldn't want to know um, when and how I would die just because I feel like I try to avoid it or be scared and um, try to change something that you know that I believe that you know you shouldn't really try to change. Uh, no I don't really think about Wait. it. Wait okay start over. <laughs> Do it all in one big span and then just not. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Okay, so is this just a yes or no question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I wouldn't because... Wait, Haley, did you already give my awesome answer that I came up with? What? Oh yeah, I did verbatim. Verbatim. And I, could, I even made it sound like I came up with it on the spot too. You're such a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I do my interview in Spanish? <laughs> Just such <switch Sí>. languages. <laughs> Yo, el tío, que Yo. el tío es yes. muy simpático. Sí. Perros. Carro. Eso sí, eso es lo que está. Carro.